seat, that would be helpful to the people behind you. Can everybody at the back, right on the back, stick your hands in the air, if you can hear me. That looks pretty good. We've got a lot to get through, guys. I know it's hot. The march will come, but with this important information we've got to give out first, guys, alright? First of all, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Turu Ball in Yagara Land. I'd like to pay my respect to the original people of this land and hold my hand out to work with them and anybody else that has pure intentions of saving this land and saving our future generations. As always guys, we're going to start with the minutes of silence. I dedicate today's minute of silence to the original people of this land that were slaughtered when this hostile takeover first began and it's still continuing today with us now. I dedicate it to the Anzacs who believed they were fighting for our freedoms and paid the ultimate sacrifice. I'd also like to dedicate this minute of silence to the emergency services, many of which have taken their badges off and joined us here today. I've been saying for a very long time that to win this war, we need the police and the military on our side. The, the police are forming their own groups, 500 getting together to fight the vaccine mandate. The nurses have formed their own union, 8,000 strong to fight the vaccine mandate. The AMBOs, the firefighters and Queensland Health are also forming groups to fight the vaccine mandates. This does not make them anti-vax. This makes them pro-choice. They're not trying to stop people from getting the vaccine. It's not a vaccine, it's an injection. We'll get to that later. They're not trying to stop anybody. They're trying to instill common sense into our so-called authorities and make them realize that as grown adults, we can educate ourselves and make decisions based on what is best for ourselves and our families. Nobody else should make that decision. Piss off if you think you can. Just before we do that minute silence, guys, the firefighter wrote in to me, he, wanted to, he wrote a little letter and he wants me to read it out on his behalf. It's titled, A Letter from an Anonymous Firefighter. Very creative, I thought. <laughs> Similar to the times we are now living in with our freedom movement, we firefighters are the ones going into the flames when everybody else is running out the other way. We risk our lives to save yours, which taps into a deep-rooted sense of humanity. We bear the scars of tragedies from the sights, sounds, and smells because at the end of the day, somebody has to deal with them. Our families miss out on so many special occasions and also carry a load because of our job. You need us, and we might need you very soon. Personally, my family has experienced the trauma of vaccine injury and with a growing number, informed, freedom, loving firefighters, we say no to mandatory vaccination as no medication is one size fits all. In the near future, we may need the rescuing from a medical mandated injection. On a deeper level, as someone who rescues people because it is innate, 
If the time comes, I will never forget or forgive a government who stops us from responding because we have chosen between a jab or not to jab. We love what we do, we love our community, our country and the freedoms we used to have. We are here together as one unit, one powerful force to extinguish these tyrannical flames. All right, guys, we're going to do a minute silence. We're going to have about a minute and a half of didgeridoo. After that, stay silent. I want you to have in your own minds, pay your respects to those that have fought for us. Then halfway through, I want you to flip that thought into the future that you want to envision. I want everybody to imagine our future generations living in a peaceful, happy world, playing with each other with no worries on their minds. They're living free. Let's do this. Right guys, we've got a jam-packed day. Like I said, I know it's warm. We'll get through it as quick as we can. Who's coming on the march? Yeah. We've got some speeches and live music after the march, guys. So make sure you come back and join us for that. Quick, some quick housekeeping. There's a block of toilets behind us down here, behind the bushes. Like in the bushes, behind the bushes. Uh, the food, I should have probably checked this. I do it every time. I don't know where anything is. The food's somewhere around here. This tent here, the blue tent down the front, food and drinks, some kombucha. Again, guys, Butcher Kombucha, donating the um, kombucha to us. They're fully supportive of us, so if you like kombucha, go down to Butchie and get some of your drinks from there. There's merchandise tents over there. And just so those moronic council people that are here trying to film us know, we're giving the merchandise away. We're accepting donations for legal fees and the merchandise is being given away. So your council morons can piss off back to headquarters. Yeah. Well, seriously, how does it make you feel coming down to a park where people are peacefully gathering, protecting the future generations of you coming here trying to look for an excuse to make it hard for them? Piss off, you morons. If I swear again, I'll do 10 push-ups. <laughs> I tell myself every time not to swear, and it just comes. I apologise. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a politician. I <laughs> Today, when we leave, this land is going to be tidier than what we found it, alright? All rubbish is to go, plus more. Maybe the council can go in the bin with them. 
Now I know everyone's excited to march, guys, but coming here on a Saturday, sunny afternoon, sitting with your friends, going for a march, walk around the city, isn't going to win this war. It's awesome. It's, it's imperative to march. It's imperative to build the numbers, raise the morale, get the momentum happening. And this is part of why TPR has gone from 3,000 at our first rally to, you know, you'll, you'll see on the march almost enough to fill Suncorp. That's why, because we, we're doing things right, people are behind us, and we're building the numbers. Very important. It also mounts pressure on the politicians. I've had contact by backbench MPs saying what we're doing is starting to cause a little bit of anxiety for these guys behind the desk. And they said to keep doing what you're doing. The funny thing is, we're only just getting started. These lovely ladies have brought down a carload of flowers to hand out to their loving people in the crowd. So if anybody would like to help these lovely women, get up, follow them to the car, maybe you know three or four people, and they can give them a hand. Okay, but what's really important is that we convert these numbers here today into important midweek actions on short notice. Those actions are what's important and what's really gonna get us going forward. You will have to take a day off work You'll have to find a babysitter for your kids. You'll have to make these sacrifices. You will lose money. You will lose time. And that's what's required. When you're making sacrifices, as an individual, you are growing. And if you're growing as an individual, we're growing as a society. And if we're pro progressing as a community, then we're heading in the right direction. And this is what our kids need. They need us to make sacrifices now. Our kids need us to make these sacrifices because this is all about the kids, isn't it? It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the children of the future. It's about the future generations. And this is what is common between us all here today. We're fighting for our kids' lives. Hey boys, get this one on camera. So midweek, are we going to be there midweek? Yeah. Are we going to stop? No. Are we going to stop? No. Are we going to stop? No. Are we going to stick together? Yes. Are we going to stick together? Yes. Are we going to win? Yes. Are we going to win? Since we're doing this, repeat after me. We are one. 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 That was pretty average. <laughs> I want everybody to get as loud as we can. I want them to hear us in camera. I want them to tremble. And I want them to realize that their days are numbered. Yeah. He's ready. I want you to put everything into this. Dig down deep, ready? We are one! 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 Yeah! That's the message to send all the criminals in Canberra to all the criminals running Big Pharma, yeah. to the sellouts in the police force, yeah. and all the other sellouts and criminals facilitating this fake pandemic and the deconstruction of our society. Media! We are one and you're going down. Yeah. Hey guys, these midweek actions we speak of may and probably will be met with heavy police presence. They're just doing the job, they reckon. That's what they said in Germany. What happened? They were hung. Now in saying that, 
We have QPS with us here today. The badges are off and they're in the crowd to support us. So there's midweek actions, depending on what it is. It might be in the lockdown. I'm just going off what I see in other places. Myself and TPR do not incite violence. We do not incite breaking government restrictions. It's good to see you're all social distancing here. <laughs> so what I've seen happen in other places around the world when these midweek actions take place, and I'm only going to comment on what I've seen, but you might want to pay attention. A group of protesters hit a police line. The police let this group gather in numbers quite largely, or to a certain degree. Then the police put a... Now, when this happens, what I've seen with my eyes on watching the mainstream media television is that the people, in their massive numbers, they rush the police line. Now, they don't do it violently, and they're not inciting violence. They aim for the gaps and they walk through them and say, get out of the way. The people are here, get out of the way. And they come through in their numbers. What I've also seen is the front line, big men at the front, they put their hands in the air like they're surrendering. All the other people from behind them push through the police line. And there might be some physical contact through my own eyes, I've seen this on mainstream media TV. But they're not taking part in it. They're innocent bystanders just getting pushed through the police line. They're not assaulting anyone. When the police circle crowds, we come in massive numbers, don't we? So what I've seen on the TV with my own eyes is these big crowds circle the police and start yelling at them to let them go. There's two cops, three cops, four cops. They're surrounded by 600 people. That's intimidating. That's a very intimidating scene to be part of. People with drums and whistles, they make noise, then everybody knows where to go to help our people out in that dangerous situation. So I mentioned we had QPS in the crowd today. We've also got the paramedics for the ambulance service. Give them a clap. We have the firefighters here today to help create the fire within and extinguish the tyrannical flames. Give them a clap. We have 2,000 nurses here today from the NPAQ. They're a noisy bunch. They said they've had enough of the tyranny and they're joining us. Now the nurses came to me and said if anybody, if any other nurses want to get together and start getting into the groups, it's not very big area, is it? <laughs> Behind this, this is a mango tree, I think. Behind this little mango tree here might be a good spot to come and meet the nurses, have a chat. Any of the public want to ask them questions, give them support, you can meet them down there as well. We need the teachers. I'm sure there's plenty of teachers here today. That is a good point. We definitely need the teachers, guys. These are the ones that stand in the classroom wearing a mask, psychologically scarring our children, making them think it's normal for, to see their teacher wearing a mask. Who's how many deaths? How many deaths in Queensland this year from the virus? One. Oh, there was actually. There might be more now. You got you got me. There was one up until a few weeks ago, I think, and then there's about five. Three and a half thousand deaths every year from accidental falls. We've had under 10 from this. This is not a pandemic. I'm on stage telling everybody and the mainstream cameras right here, we are partaking in a fake pandemic. There is no pandemic. The own government's website, the government statistics prove there is no pandemic. How can you claim one death or five deaths or 10 deaths is a pandemic? You're full off CIAP, didn't swear no push-ups. <laughs> Most importantly, guys, we have all of you here today that have forgotten your differences. The rich are here, the poor are here, there's Christians and Muslims, there's black fellows and white fellows. And why are we here, guys? It's pretty obvious. It's for freedom and it's for our children's freedom. All it takes me just to go brave hard on all this thing and is to vision the future generation's eyes. The unborn children of the future. Have that vision in your head. And do not let anything touch them. It is your job, it is your duty. Do not fail. Your time is now, people.
give each other a clap for being down here today, guys. All right, guys. Who today is, has come down to this park for the first time to be part of a TPR rally? Put your hands up in the air. Have a look around, guys. That's a good percentage. Welcome to the TPR family. Thank you for supporting us. In return, we will support you back. This is a community movement. For all the newcomers, I want to direct your eyes to this flag over here with the line on it. This is our logo. This is your logo. You'll notice that the arms, one's black, one's white. That symbolises people's perceived differences. Key word is perceived differences because they try and use anything to make us think that we are different. Anything they can, they will use against us and it is successful. So now we go back on that and we tell our people there is no difference. We are all, there was only one race, right? The countries, the uh, invisible line around the countries, it's invisible for a reason, it doesn't exist. There's only one race, it's called the human race and you're all part of it here today. So the arms, you notice, they start off separate because people are se separated when they think they've got differences, right? When you get over your differences, watch the arms, they come, they flow down into the middle and they meet as one, they unite. So when you forget your differences, you create a unit. The lion that is formed out of these arms represent power and strength. The fingers are in the shape of a V. The V symbolises peace and victory. So overall, we have a logo that says when the people forget their differences and unite, we create a powerful and strong unit and through this powerful and strong unit, we will achieve victory through peace. That is the People's Revolution. Welcome, everybody. Now, we've got a couple of campaigns going, guys, at the moment. One of them is a billboard campaign. Now, that might sound, uh, you know, whatever. But let's think about this properly. I told you there's no pandemic. Do you guys agree with me that there is no pandemic at the moment? Yeah. Oh, we agree on that. So this is a war, it's an information war. It's a war of their propaganda to create fear in the minds of the public and through that fear, our people are more willing to accept ridiculous draconian control measures built on a totalitarian society, which is what they're using COVID for, to implement. So we do to them what they do to us. They've done this for hundreds of years. They've done the research, they've done the development, we don't need to do it. We learn from it and we flip it and we use it on them. In 2017, I got a billboard up on the behalf of the Australian Vaccination Risks Network. The ABN is a group that lobbies the government and produces proper, well, they uh, present proper scientific evidence, peer-reviewed studies, and offer that to the public because the public don't get to see that otherwise, it's all hidden. On behalf of the ABN, I got up a billboard on the north side of Brisbane, which just asked a question. The question said, Vaccinated or unva unvaccinated, who is healthier? Myself and the AVN was blacklisted from every billboard, in every location, in every state of this country for asking a question. The health minister at that stage was Stephen Miles. He makes a trip to my billboard, to our billboard, stands out below it and makes a video claiming that this, hate, this is hate speech, this billboard is hate speech, it needs to be pulled down, and they were exploring avenues to prosecute and have that billboard pulled down. What do we think of Stephen Miles? <laughs> Deputy of nothing. We've also got a no more campaign, which is aimed at ending these lockdowns, asking them for science that they've used to create these ridiculous control measures which they're pulling out of their hats. You're trying to get me, I know you're trying to get me these push-ups. <laughs> so there's a campaign on the People's website, which is thepeoplesrevolution.com.au. It takes 20 seconds to fill out. When you fill it out, a letter gets sent to Anastasia Palashuk and your local MP. We're going to give that a bit more time, because what we can do, our software tells us how many letters have been sent to which MP in which electorate. After we analyse those numbers, we will be mounting pressure campaigns on these MPs, 
We know how many people are upset with this, old mate. And if you don't start responding to us now, we will start a campaign to have you removed from your seat. That should be enough. Woo! Now, there's no guarantees that this is going to work. But in a war, you try things, and eventually a bullet flies through and hits the spot. So that's what we're doing. Between us, we have... As individuals, we don't have much resources. When you put them all together, we are a powerful unit, and we need to stay strong and stay connected. So we've got 50,000 flyers. Where's one of my admin girls? Uh, Sin. All right. So we've printed out 50,000 flyers, guys. The objective with these flyers is you can grab them from the blue tent. Over the next seven days, we want the whole of South East Queensland, or Brisbane, I guess, flooded, where you want to go, flooded with these flyers. It's got information about the No More campaign. It's got the TJ statistics on the back, which claim five or six deaths this year from COVID, 456 deaths following the COVID vaccine injection. If we put this into letterboxes, it's got a QR code. Now, I hate QR codes, but we're not using them to check in, so it just makes it easier for these fence sitters and the mainstreamers. We'll take them to the website. They'll sign it. We get the numbers up, and we can start really campaigning, guys. We've got to, we've got to start really digging the hills in. It takes a little bit of effort, and that's what's required. So all of this takes resources, time, money, and energy. So we will be asking for donations today, guys. And while I don't want to make this about money, we all must learn that you cannot go to war without resources and money. That's the bottom line, guys. And I've had to bring myself to ask. This is about the second time I've asked for money. It's a hard thing for me to do because I hate it. I hate the fact that money makes the world go around. But unfortunately, that, that's what the world we're in for now. We should use, utilize everything we can to fight back on this. So the donation buckets are going to be going around with... Who else you got? Who's carrying them? Just use it. Yeah, you'll make this up on the spot. <laughs> Check it out. So these are the bosses, guys. The locks. They've got a slide in the middle. TPR stickers. They're for your donations. Now, if you can't afford to give a donation, do not feel bad. Unfortunately, we live in a world where a lot of people have a lot more money than other people. That's just the way it is. Do not feel bad about it. You are part of the team, and if you want to contribute, you can find any way to contribute with your time, your skill set, whatever it is. So don't feel bad about it. Contact us. We can help. You know, you can help us. This is what it takes. I don't expect everybody to have money. It's bullshit. Be... <laughs> I'm not doing it again. That wasn't fun as well as what it was going to be. All right, guys, take a seat. Apparently what's happened here, someone will explain, explain the situation. There's a guy flying a drone, the cops didn't like it. After they already spoke to me about drones and having them filming the bridges and things like that. He was, I don't know the details, right? But the cuffs went on him. What's going to happen? Where, wherever this guy is with the handcuffs on, put a t-shirt around his face. Myself and this legend of a cop over here, right, he's a good guy. We're going to go meet the guy. We're going to go take the handcuffs on him, and he's going to be released. All right? So if you, anybody here sees the guy with the handcuffs on, tell him what I'm saying. Send some, put a shirt over his face. Come get me, and we'll do it. We'll do it somewhere. I do not want people coming down again. Okay? We showed what people power can do. He was released. Now, don't, don't do that again to today. We're good. All right? So when that guy is free... Shirt over the face, bring him down, get somebody else to contact me. We'll get the handcuffs on him and that's it. That's why I say when there's big week actions, you don't bring your kids. Because there's high potential for things like that to happen. We all good? All right. Now everybody come sit back down again. Leave those cops alone, stop looking at them, they're not doing anything wrong. All right? Let's go back to the crowd, guys. Where were we? I was just about to port the kids, all right? Hey, uh, Nelly. Nelly, do we have any kids' t-shirts left? What's she saying? Oh, well, this kid has to be tiny, you know? 
Now, do we have any kids here today, guys? If you're a kid, I want, to, I want you to stick your hand in the air. Here are the kids. Give the kids a clap, guys. Now, all the kids, I want you to listen to this next line very carefully. All right? It's a quote. Can everybody at the back still hear, all right? All right. Now, I want the kids to listen to this extremely carefully and think about it. It's a Dr. Seuss quote. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Now, does any kid in the crowd want to come tell me what, they, what that means to them? Any kids that want to tell me what that little verse meant to them just then? Don't be shy. That's a big kid. <laughs> 16, I'm talking about nine-year-olds. <laughs> that line meant to me that if we don't change, nothing will. And it starts with us. We're the future. She's not going to sit into the size three shirt that we had sitting up there. So. <laughs> Go see if it fits your broke out there. What's your name, man? Eli. Eli. If no one's going to do anything, nothing's going to happen. We have to get up and stand. What's your name? Charlotte, guys. We need to be the change that society needs. We can't just follow what we're told. We can't conform to, to social media, to what people are telling us. We need to create the change. Good stuff, guys. That's our future right there, all right? We teach them young, we teach them early, we teach them the right way, and then we've got nothing to worry about. What's your name, brother? Jack, ladies and gentlemen. COVID's a hoax. I guess he's right. No, I apologise for the little uh, interruption we had there. Now, before I introduce the first speaker, I'd like to put across how disgusted I am with our current body of unions. Pretty much every single union I'm referring to here. The Queensland Police Union just announced the QPS has the right to mandate this experimental COVID injection on its employees. Yeah. Katarina Carroll, the police commissioner, also says that she has the right to terminate the contract of her employees for refusing the injection. Yeah. What do we think about the QPS? Apart from the good guys. And there's a lot of good QPS guys here with us today, so let's not get, get the wires crossed there. The nurses' union has stated similar things. Other unions have stated that the workers can't wear masks, even with a valid, valid medical exemption, can be terminated as it's considered PPE. Now I've done some research into PPE. PPE is to protect yourself. So if you're grinding for a short duration of time, you wear a mask, a risk assessment is done. I have not been able to locate anywhere a risk assessment that states wearing a mask to protect yourself from COVID for nine and a half hours a day every day is a safe thing to do. It can't be PPE. If it is, I think it's wholly unlawful. So what needs to happen is we sack the unions. Just get rid of them. The unions, they've got tricks. All they do, they, they do a little bit just enough to make it look like they're working for us. 
and keep the membership fees coming in. They'll never rock the boat. They are politically affiliated. They're another arm of the government. Sack the unions. Yeah. And what do we do after that? We start our own unions and they're run by us. Now again, that takes resources. Not just money, but people with knowledge and experience in those certain fields. So those guys need to start stepping up, sticking the chest out, and commit themselves to a hard task ahead. Commitment and sacrifice. What did I say earlier? Without sacrifice, we go nowhere. That's right, no sacrifice, no victory. And speaking of knowledge and experience, our next speaker is the former president of the Trades Hall Union, Trades Hall Council in Canberra, former state secretary of the CFMEU, former senior industrial officer of the Public Service Union, former senior industrial officer of the Federated Clerks Union. He's got a long history in the unions and he is not happy. Brothers and sisters, please welcome John Wilson to the stage. The year of the absolute betrayal, absolute betrayal of the people of Queensland and the people of Australia. Yeah. Have we been betrayed? Yeah. But if they sell us out like sponge cakes, do we really care? Hey, true blue. I miss, I miss our old mate. I miss him a lot. What have we learnt about Anastasia Palaszczuk in 2021? What have we learnt about her? Well, I'll tell you what I've learnt. I've learnt that you can put lipstick on a big, fat, globalist pig, but they're still a big, fat, globalist pig. I don't care how you chop and dice it. I don't care what lipstick you put on. She's still a big, fat, globalist pig. I like this guy. I like this guy. The same person, the same person that wants to track and trace every one of us but refuses, refuses to put a pedophile and sex offenders register together. The same bloody person. What does that say? What does that tell you? What does that tell you about that big, fat, globalist pig? What does that tell you? My name's John Wilson and you're right, I am angry. I am and I'm spewing, I'm spewing after a lifetime, a lifetime of support of the trade union movement. They've all morphed into black leg scabs. They're scabbing on us. They're scabbing on their membership. They're scabbing on the Australian people. There's two things that I know quite well in my years 
that I've learned. One is I know the Australian trade union movement. I have been an insider at the upper echelons. Rest assured, rest assured, I was a big dick swinger when I was a young man in the thing. I used to have 10 inches in an inch, 10 inches in a wrinkle. Now I've got 10 wrinkles in an inch. But if you give me an inch, I'm going to take a mile. We live in dangerous times. We live in dangerous times. I myself, I myself face three years in jail. I've got to face a trial on the 29th of this month in the Cleveland Magistrates Court. I've been criminally charged and I'm looking down the barrel of three years jail. I've been charged in a politically motivated charge by the Commonwealth Department of Prosecutions and the Queensland Police, all political, and I've been charged at the urging of the Victorian Satan's helper, uh, Fiona Patton. So we live in we live in dangerous times and we're all taking risks. We're all taking risks. I get that. I truly get it. But I don't care. I just don't care. Look, the discussion I want to have today, and I'm not going to go into great, great detail. I've only got about six or seven minutes. I want to make sure that everyone knows here today that the Australian trade union movement and in particular the Queensland trade union movement, they are not a passive force in this force vaccination and this uh, uh, tracing. They are not a passive player. They are front and centre. They are joined at the hip with the Australian Labor Party, uh, suffocated with censorship. Every time you get brutalised by a mongrel copper, every time you get harassed, then rest assured, the leadership, and I'm not talking about the ordinary union member, mate, because they're, they're as good as gold. I love them. But every time that happens, the leadership of the trade union movement in this state and this country are front and centre. They are the engine room. They are the engine room for all of this. They are a huge money laundering machine for the Australian Labor Party. A huge one. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, I've been following the trade unions all my life, all my life. Now, right now, the former president of the ACTU, Sharon Burrow, who is now the, uh, the secretary of the International Confederation of Trade Unions, headquartered in Brussels, okay, headquartered in Brussels, uh, uh, she is an annual participant at Davos, an annual participant, an active participant with the World Economic Forum. And now, yes, she is. She and she co-chairs meetings and she's been doing that in recent years. This is not a new thing. They've been setting us up for this portrayal for a number of years now. A number of years. They're not, they are not a passive player. Now, Sharon Burrows is now participating at the instigation of Lynn Forrester, Forrester Rothschild, okay, the Rothschild family, she, at her invitation with the Vatican, the Antichrist Pope, okay, the Antichrist Pope, Sharon Burrow is now participating in what they call the Council of Inclusive Capitalism. Okay, okay. 
So rest assured, internationally, internationally, the trade union movement have been uh, uh, the International Confederation of Trade Unions. These people have been lining us up for the sellout for the betrayal for several years. I want to say this about petitions, okay? I've been getting a lot of petitions recently, okay? People wanting me to sign a petition. Now, let me say, stop it. Stop sending me petitions because I am not begging my political masters. I am not begging them for another couple of foot of chain. I am not doing it. I am not begging them for a, to loosen the, the collar around my neck by a couple of, a couple of uh, notches. I want to expose them all. I want to expose them all and take them all down. I want them cleaned out. I want them out. The lot of them. The lot of them. There's an unholy alliance. There's an unholy alliance in this country between some evil, evil parties, I can tell you. And you can't negotiate with evil. You've got to defeat it. You've got to defeat it. Now is the time. Now is the time to take off these bloody masks and put the full armour of God on. The full armour of God and go to war. We go to war. We defeat them. They ain't going to give it to us. We got to take it off them. We got to take it off them. Put the full armour of God on and take it off them. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to change it up. We were going to do another speech, but I can see people's getting restless. So we're going to head off very soon for the march. So stay seated. Are there any Kiwis here that want to partake in the haka? If there is, there's some to Johnny Waka to do the haka. We're going to do it up there, but if you want to brief them behind here. If you guys, if you Kiwi haka boys want to come down and speak to Johnny behind this tree here, <coughs> we'll get that stage. No, 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 no. Trust me, trust me. All right, guys. Was that bass drummer? Jimmy Cricket. Missing again. <laughs> Actually, we're going to give uh, Jerry here three or four minutes to have a chat to you. It's really important information. He's the legal counsel for the People's Revolution. He's a very switched on, very experienced man. He's got some important news to give you. We're going to do this short speech. It'll be about three or four or five minutes. Then we're going to go on the march. So just give this man your attention. It's important. Wow, I haven't spoken to such a large audience ever. I think the biggest it ever gets is a jury of 12. All right? Um, I wasn't going to speak today at all. I just came to support what's happening here. But I've got some very interesting news that I've just got last night and today. There are two key people in the United States have put together proper evidence for criminal prosecutions of Fauci and many... Many, many other parasites that have been living up the people. Now, the two key names, remember them because they're important, is a Dr. David Martin and a Dr. Francis Boyle. Dr. Francis Boyle is a lawyer, not a doctor, but he is a senior professor at Harvard University Law School. He was also a senior prosecutor at the International Criminal Court. And he's put together a brief now that will affect us here also because whatever crimes have been committed by this cabal of bureaucrats, politicians, crooked cops, well, it fits over here too because the crimes 
are committed globally. And we here in Australia, New Zealand, and Britain and Canada have a very unique advantage over other countries, including the United States. Every one of you can prosecute just like the cops. You can bring a complaint and we'll be filing those complaints on behalf of everybody who's prepared to stand up and prosecute. Dr. Boyle is talking about breaches of the Nuremberg rules, genocide, murder, uh, conspiracy to murder, and also conspiracy to cause grievous bodily harm. Those are our laws here, but they're the same in other countries. And of course, uh, we're also talking about the greatest fraud ever perpetuated in the whole world. Okay? So we're talking to lawyers in the US, in Britain, Canada, New Zealand, and other places, and we're putting together a team now, not to sue them in class actions at this stage, but to lock them up. All right? Now, now, I've been doing this sort of work for over 40 years, so I can kind of do it with my eyes closed, but unless I've got the support of this sort of a crowd behind me, they'll take me out. All right? So, these court cases, they're going to be coming up. We want everybody to turn up for them. Tell the judge you want justice. Okay? Thank you. Good work, Kristen. Thanks, Terry. Now, Jerry is a very experienced lawyer. He's a TPR lawyer. And this is what I mean when I say that TPR is backed by experienced professionals from different avenues. We're not, go we're not going in here blind, guys. I'll listen to my advisors and make decisions based on what the advisors are saying. We are, we're an organisation, not a disorganisation, all right? All right, well, who's getting ready to go for a walk? We will have a quick practice of these chants and then wait for me to walk up to the Parliament House and we'll go up through there. We made a, we made a negotiation today with the cops guys. We're actually going to be going through the Queen Street Mall. After me. Wake up Australia! Wake up Australia! Mass hysteria! Mass hysteria! Wake They say wear a mask, we say no. They say wear a mask, we say no. They say get a vaccine, we say no. They say get a vaccine, we say no. My body, my choice, my body, my choice. Australia, has a voice. Australia has a voice The rest will work out as we go, eh? <laughs> If there's anyone with megaphones and they want one of these chart sheets, come and see me now. I'll leave them down here on the stage and grab it yourself. <laughs>